Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I show you guys the coolest custom creations I happen to see people building in LEGO throughout this last week. I'll be showcasing and talking about just 10, but the ones flashing by the screen are also linked in the description below. Everything I show off in this episode is linked in the description below, and I highly recommend you check out the Flickr pages and show some support to the talented custom creators that are featured in this episode. I don't order this from best to worst, I just kind of talk about them in any order that I feel like, and generally I show off builders that I haven't seen before earlier in the episode. This week, the custom creation that went up in the web store is a series of three different classic muscle cars. <laughs> The designer Sawman Bricks, I think, had a blast building these vehicles. He's really good at building at this scale. And if you wanted to get the custom building instructions, you can find them linked in the description below at our web store, www.brickvault.toys. Now let's jump into the very first build of the week from Hu G. William. We have Golf Racing Viper. Based on the description, it seems like this may be an updated version of a slightly older model, but it's the first I'm seeing of it. And there's a lot of things that I think really work for me here on this build. The arch pieces that hold on to the outer wings or pontoon type shapes are attached by hinges and it makes for a great little sleek down angle. The color combination is awesome and I don't believe that's a light brick underneath the canopy but instead just a white brick underneath the trans orange which makes a nice bright glow. Wonderful use of chrome and an excellent little viper all around. Next up is a much larger brick built figure. Looks like a lot of Bionicle and Technic pieces used here from Eclipse Color. We have Amias. You can see the nougat colored track pieces are what clothe this much larger figure and the proportions look excellent. You can tell that there's quite a bit of complex building underneath uh, the relatively simplified track pieces and he looks like a pretty well realized supervillain. I'm going supervillain. He doesn't look as much like a hero. It looks like you might want to steer clear of this guy. Excellent build for Hammer, and we are moving on to Little John. He built the Grand Victory at Al Tajir, and this might sound a little silly on my part, but when I first saw this build, it immediately took me to Aladdin. The structures and atmosphere absolutely reflect that era, and the building techniques are excellent. My favorite bits are the aqua blue that are subtly hidden underneath the white from a distance that looks very, very ornate, and I also like that dark orange brick design along the edges of the wall to make it just feel a little bit more brick built. When surfing through the pics though, you can see that it's more than just wonderful structures. There's actually quite a lot of action happening, and this is definitely one of those builds that's worth taking a closer look at, because there's lots of fun things to notice on the inside. Now here's a fun simple one. This is the best version I have seen of a minifig scale diva so far, and Travis Taylor did an excellent job knocking this out. The Overwatch sets have all been released. Maybe they'll make more in the future. I certainly hope so, but some of the larger figures were built at a much higher play scale. While that that is cool and it's definitely a lot more interactive. I always love to see uh, where designers go when they try to make something fig scale and the diva is not actually that easy I don't think but Travis Taylor did just such a good job not just making this mech robot look cool but uh, there's also a bit of animation and life to the stance as well I'm sure it takes a little bit of time to balance the whole thing out but excellent little build now this one has been making the rounds in a lot of different forms I really like this it's from Ralph Salzberg and it's the RNIAF F16 AM Viper at a large enough scale the blue blockiness uh, to make these shapes really kind of blends together when you look at this thing from afar. I love the angle that was achieved on the wings and the proportions and accuracy of the actual shape of this vehicle seem to have been followed to the T, though I can't say I'm really an expert when it comes to jet fighters. He took a ton of picks, you get some great angles, and then move into the builder Manuel Nascimento. There is the Land Rover Defender 110. Recently a Technic Defender came out not too long ago, a different model, but this guy has tech the much more classic and honestly a lot more rugged looking version that isn't just the Land Rover on its own but actually comes with a bit of off-roading space to set up camp. The scale here is absolutely massive which means there's a lot of excellent details included. The brick built figure gives you kind of an idea of how big this thing is and if you want to see a lot of time effort and energy dedicated to one very large vehicle build this designer has quite a storied history with that and what you're looking at is years of experience when it comes to uh, making wonderful details. I think the Land Rover getting to look 
good and correct here. Takes a whole heck of a lot of time to plan out correctly. And planned out correctly, he did. This is a really, really excellent model. I love the stickers. Anyways, again, stay on just this one. Let's move on. From DVD, you tell me, is this creepy or funny? The official title is I'm Off the Track Now. And I, I don't know, I'm getting the creepy vibes a little bit more than the goofy ones. Thomas's eyes being a little bit askew make him look kind of demented and somewhat out of control. And that's sort of the last thing I would want from a giant walking engine. The robotic legs look quite strong and have their own kind of alternate detailing that differentiates Thomas from the rest of his nice bright colors on the top. And I can't help but wonder what this would look like if he was fighting one of his counterpart engines. I just feel like that would be the next uh, step, logical progression step when trying to flesh out the universe that gave birth to walking Thomas the Tank Engine who also looks a little bit crazy. Now what is it exactly when it comes to flying ships? Battle cruisers and destroyers and basically any kind of boat can be a pretty popular subject when it comes to a custom Lego build and then the subsequent flying versions of them I would say are just as common if not uh, maybe more so sometimes. From Sunder 59 this is the air battle cruiser and from the top it looks like we have have what could be, uh, for all I know, a historically accurate recreation of an actual uh, destroyer that exists or did exist in the past, and then some wonderful little uh, propellers on the side that just give you the nice little suggestion that this thing could be flying through the air. Recently I've been looking a lot more at battleships. I love the way different turret designs are put together with bracket pieces, some shield parts, and lots and lots of bar clips and ice skates. And here you can just get the scale for this battle cruiser with a nice little propeller plane in the back. That little gear piece is a wonderful little suggestion to show propellers. And now we're moving on to the last three. From Joxon, this is the Husk of Mineral. This designer excels at making brick-built figures, and this is such a cool and interesting one, because not only do we have a very uh, vibrant and animated what looks like metallic minotaur, but he is in the process of being engulfed by uh, something I certainly wouldn't want to catch. The matte black of the spikes sticking out to the side really show uh, a very alternate texture when combined with the trans purple. And I can't say that I'm looking forward to the final form of whatever the heck this guy turns into. And believe it or not, this actually wasn't exactly planned, but the next one up is from Duncan Lindbo, and it's called Crystalline Tree. This has also been making the rounds on some other brick forums, and for also a very, very good reason. Number one, how did he get all of these trans purple pieces to fit together in a way where you can't see anything else? It's all trans purple. I can't see a single other connector piece on the inside uh, that brings it together. I can't tell if uh, the picture has some reflection here and there's lights maybe on the inside or perhaps that's just how uh, this thing is lit. It kind of makes it look like it's glowing a bit from the inside. But either way, kudos because who, how, how, did, it looks like mostly Bionicle connector pieces were made in trans purple and he just got an absolute ton of them. I can't tell if like trans purple cheese wedge pieces have been attached to it or if this entire thing is Bionicle, but either way, it's just such a cool looking uh, creation. And he actually did some fun stuff for the stand that went along with it as well. Hey, oh, we moved on to the last build of the week. Usually it's something big, at least more often than not, but not the case this time around. I could have sworn I saw something very similar to this in the past, but Loki Loki 29 uh, has released his Alien Invasion, and he took the pictures a couple days ago, and it's just such a wonderful micro-scale build. You can see a smaller UFO uh, with little green men running out into the cornfield, probably going to make some nice little messages, and then the mother ship is uh, picking up one of the residents of Earth. Micro-building is always a lot of fun. The minifigure hands make up the corn, or hay. That suitcase piece is, uh, is I think, a cover for a trough, can't really tell. And then you'll notice some of those one-by-one -one plates in white have the little eye print on it and that makes up the spots on the cows. I love picking up on little details like that for micro builds and anyways that is it for my personal top 10 mocks of the week. Let me know what you guys thought were the best ones out there. Remember there are a ton more that I didn't have time to talk to and if you liked any of this stuff I showed off today there's a very good chance that some of the mystery ones in the description below might end up being some of your favorite builds. So anyways thank you so much for watching everybody. If you enjoy our content you can always like or subscribe. Subscribe. Don't forget to check out the web store and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault. Yeah!